Today I want to talk a little bit about why I am bitter um, in the field of behavior analysis. And to do this, we need to kind of like create some boundaries and talk about it within some sort of context. Let's take the total number of people that are in the United States. So as of yesterday, there was 327,709,757 people that were living in the United States. If we take that number of one in 58, the number of people that are diagnosed with autism spectrum disorder um, in the United States, that is the prevalence rate by the CDC, and the reason I'm selecting this is because the majority of you are all working in those sort of areas, helping people with this disorder um, or similar disabilities, that, that allows us then create some other things. So let's take that 1 in 58 and let's divide it by that 327 million number that I had. That leaves 5,650,000 people, roughly, that should have autism spectrum disorder. So the question then becomes, how many behavior analysts would be needed to be able to fill just this one population? Let's not even talk about the fact that our, our field is supposed to be able to tackle all consumers of behavior analytic services um, or all possible social issues potentially. Let's take an average caseload or what should be an average caseload, all right? And you can disagree with me on this and run the numbers, but the point I think is still gonna hold. So if we take that 5,650,000 number and we divide it by this 15, the average number of caseload, we would have roughly 376,000 BCBAs at that master level that would be required. So then the question becomes like, will we actually hit this number of BCBAs? Will the quality be able to hold up if we were to continue down this route? And the growth rates suggest that we could. Now, with any exponential growth, what you see is you start to see it taper off over time. So um, the question becomes of when that will be, what sort of infrastructure do those people need to have, et cetera. See, I was taught about a behavior analysis that would create behavioral technologies. That is, it would take the goodness of behavior analysis, what it is that we love to learn about the field and how to help people out and merge that with technology, things that would actually allow the field to scale. There's so many examples that are out there, but they're not known. You can take Hank Pennypacker, right? And Mamacare, the solution to try to help people identify breast lumps. You could take Headsprout, Janet Twyman, Joe Lang, Greg Steichleather, and the group that worked on trying to scale reading comprehension. Over three million people were reached by that, but you don't hear about them. You don't you get taught in our classes about how it is that you can actually create a behavioral technology. And I don't understand it. Like on, on the one hand, I do because I mean we're all humans, right? We're gonna be chasing the money and where it is that we're gonna be able to help out, but for a field that understands consequences and, and systems and how it is that human behavior really works, like why are we not focusing on the fact that there's a disconnect here and how we're actually going to be able to solve the world's problems? Pick a data source. It doesn't have to be the autism spectrum disorders one. It could be climate change. It could be any sort of political movement or thing that you're into. The numbers don't add up and I try not to get down but I really don't know how it is that we're ever going to meet what our good old boy B.F. Skinner and others talked about in Walden too. Like, I get disheartened. I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't know how we're gonna do this. Um, it's been 10 years I've been in this field, and if anything, I've worked myself into a point where we aren't going to meet the needs as it is, so what can we do to actually change and fix that? I'd be interested in your thoughts on, on any of this. Leave them down below. See you tomorrow.